Copy that. All right. Uh, I am here with Warden Northstar UE Emperor. Uh, we are doing an interview on the incident uh, with the bombing of Jade Cove. Uh, just to start, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, everybody. Um, happy holidays. I am UE Emperor of the Warden Northern Star, and uh, hello. <laughs> Alright, so uh, let's just get straight into this. Uh, how long had you planned this uh, operation out for? The, uh, well, the conception of the idea, of course, came in with the, uh, with the release of the rocket and the, uh, the new update. Um, the planning of the rocket took several days. Um, to gather both the, of course, the um, the equipment, the technology, the equipment, and the um, uh, the necessary materials to build the rocket, but also to take the supplies to secure, fortify, and well, generally uh, make up the area uh, that we're going to be based on, as in the launch site. All right. And uh, did you decide this entirely within your own clan, or was this a joint operation of some sort? The the building, um, the uh, basically the preparation, the organization, the building, and the launching of the rocket were were made by the WNS. Um, but because this is a well monumental task. We gather the support of multiple clans as well as singular uh, singular individuals. Would you be uh, able to name any of the clans that were able to help uh, help you out here? Uh, essentially, when it comes to the preparation and the uh, well general organization before we even got to Farinac, uh, Farinac Coast, um, we were basically alone. Um, in the when we started moving into or, or actually organizing to get into or planning to get into Farrah Coast to set up the uh, uh, launch site, we were discussing with uh, members of the War Navy Clan. Uh, we discussed uh, and received help uh, once we moved in um, uh, from the WGA or the Warden Guardian Angels Clan. Um, and essentially, uh, whenever and um, wherever we could, uh, enlisting the help of randoms to uh, both uh, prepare, scrap, uh, you know, uh, refine and mine materials, as well as to uh, bring uh, the, the said materials to the launch site and, let's just say, the FOB around the uh, the staging area. All right, and uh, why choose Jade Cove? Uh, what led to you guys deciding that that should be the site to uh, use the missile on? Well, this is uh, this is a, a, a tough thing. It, it, it's well, I, I'm guessing it's the meat of the subject, of course, but uh, it is a very, very um, difficult thing to understand because of the um, the uh, uh, intermediate uh, events. Let's just say that, um, actually, b before I say this, I want to say that choosing Jade Cove was not an easy decision by any stretch of the imagination. We were never going to bomb an area uh, uh, that had friendly units inside or anything else uh, at all, basically. Um, before I before I start explaining how it happened, what what the events that led to the actual launch, first of all, I'd like to clarify and to clear up the misconceptions that ha that uh, uh, surfaced. There was at the time of impact no friendly uh, units in the area, no friendly units, no supplies, nothing that was warden made uh, except the buildings and everything else that were empty. I, I, I do have a question there. Uh, was it uh, Lek the Tech that fired the missile? I actually saw the picture you posted in the press discord and uh, this was actually... And, and, 
honestly, this is sad to say, but this was a member of our team, team not being the WNS or any of that helped us build and launch the rocket. This was a member of the Warden team, uh, along with others, that came to our position at the launch site and tried to grief, um, uh, let's just say stop, sabotage, whatever you want to use, by destroying friendly assets, including the only battle tank we had, uh, we, we personally owned, the WNS owned, to secure the area, to help us secure the area, as well as friendly battle tanks, two uh, specifically, that came in to help us um, uh, protect the region. They literally, and um, I would like you to post the picture if you had it, um, to, to, to see the volume of damage he caused. He literally destroyed, I'm not going to say hours of work, I'm going to say equipment that after the launch, whether you agree with it or not, could have been used to actually take over the whole of Faranag. The, 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 the whole of the southern area of Faranag. Or, at the very least, defend the, uh, the area we held, which is all the way north from Apollo's landing, uh, to Terra and, uh, and Luxta, uh, for at least a few more hours, if not a day. So, you're saying that uh, Lechthatek, who was spotted killing uh friendlies at the time of the detonation that was killing people who were at the launch site again and you're correct in this but just to clarify there were no friendly units or assets in the launch uh, uh in the uh, in the impact zone none at all end of story the enemy contact or rather the 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 contacts that were hit at jade cove where Colonials, specifically a, a spearhead platoon of the Colonials, and there were indeed about 30 men, a platoon's worth, um, 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 aided by a uh, enemy uh, light tank, and I believe, which I'm not sure on this one, a captured Warden battle tank. Uh, and uh, that's all they were, th 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 that was there. The people that died, like the, the, the loss of Warden life, was exclusively at the launch site at the hands of people who did not agree with the decision whether you think that is wrong or not right and killed friendly people that were there whether to help us or just because they wanted to discuss the um uh, uh, argue about the um launch or they were there well just to be there just to help all right. Uh, well, thank you for the clarification. I'll follow up and uh, see if I can get in contact with uh, Lech the Tech and see if he can corroborate this. Uh, of course. Yeah, just I have to make sure I know that that is the case. Uh, so, back to uh, the discussion at hand. Uh, there were people who were arguing that we should have targeted places like Hermit's Rest and other such sites that have a munitions factory. Uh, why, why did uh, WNS decide uh, against targeting one of those sites? So, this is where uh, I'm going to go a little bit off track, um, because I will try to explain, if, if that is okay with the press, um, on to, to explain what happened or the thought process um, that led to Jade Cove becoming the the target, the eventual target. Um, first off, let's just say that our original objective, our original launch target, was Westgate, an area specifically an area in Westgate where the logistical um, the, the the damage the missile will deal to the logistical efforts uh, of the Colonials would cripple, absolutely cripple, their long-term war effort on the Western Front. Essentially, our target was 
Ref uh, go build the rocket. Sec uh, first of all, secure the area, of course. Um, build up the rocket. B uh, be supported by friendly elements, friendly clans and randoms, and, of course, whoever else was there and willing to help. And, um, and uh, achieve a intra-region launch, that is a world uh, 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 launch, onto Westgate, onto a specific target in Westgate that would um, lead to a uh, collapse in the colonial war effort, uh, or uh, more specifically, the logistical part, which would lead to the collapse of the war effort in general. Um, however, the case was, um, it was a little bit more difficult than we hoped for various reasons. Um, Unless you have anything else to say, I will begin uh, explaining said reasons. Uh, no, uh, go right ahead. If you want to explain that uh, process, feel free to. I'll just be recording it here. Okay, so give me one second to actually uh, place it chronologically if I can. So when we started planning the... Uh, the operation Bef before we even um, we, we have a logistical center at the cut uh, and that is where we uh, manage our operations before we move to uh, Faranek which uh, let's uh, assume Faranek was the, uh, the, the, the the operational area before we planned we, we, we even got to building the rocket and or the missile and uh, the subsequent supplies needed uh, and assets uh, we discussed with uh, members of uh, or leadership of the Warden Navy, uh, specifically von Klaus, and uh, other people from uh, various clans, uh, such as uh, um, uh, uh, some members of 3SB loosely. And we decided that um, by Warden Navy, by the Warden Navy supplying us with um, uh, with uh, with uh, naval support, uh, keeping the seas clear. Uh, by helping a few other groups, um, uh, uh, specifically randoms, uh, defending uh, um, defending Faranac coast to hold the ground and actually fortify the position in order for us to, um, uh, let's just say, grow the missile, uh, the defenses and everything and prep it for an intra-region launch. Um, essentially, we've, we've created an operation or a plan that would have... Um, been dependent on uh, cooperation between, you know, various uh, groups and also individuals from the Warden team, and we would then be able to launch, as I said before, at Westgate. What happened is, uh, what really happened is that we set up, uh, we had a few problems with uh, desyncing and uh, uh, a few griefing attempts, which I don't like to mention. But um, after a brief, uh, after a lengthy, sorry, not a brief uh, at all, a lengthy preparation period, we've uh, moved with uh, supplies and assets, specifically one battle tank, three light tanks, three half tracks, as in we had a significant garrison. Um, we went to the missile silo, the, the launch site of Faranac Coast. We set up in the region. Uh, we started fortifying the area because uh, we, we expected the incoming enemies, or at least scouts, which they did came, uh, they did come. Um, and that was about, uh, by the way, just to clarify, this is about a day's, a real day's, a real life day's worth of, um, of, um, of events. Um, so... Essentially, before the missile missile was even fueled and ready to launch, right, there was a lot of colonial pressure in the region. We ended up almost outright losing the launch site due to enemy pres the enemy presence. The, the, it was absolutely overwhelming. Um, not because they were numerically strong uh, or, or big in size, but they did not stay in the Jade Cove or the southern you know bridge area. They crossed the bridge. They took down uh, areas south, southeast, and east of uh, Terra, and even went as far as to go north of Sickle Hill, which is the uh, launch site, let's just say, 
um, and take uh, take down and secure the uh, the only breach bridge that um, connected us with uh, uh, Mooring County. This effectively starved us of resources, or at least uh, meant that we will be starving uh, of resources. Um, something that also led to this decision was the a destruction of Spade, an area that provided the much needed specialist shells for the Warden battle tanks, and of course, uh, in itself being a very important logistic um, area. Now, we were at the, um, because our garrison was just so small numerically when it comes to manpower, our actual WNS troops and the friendlies that covered us, um, we were desperate for a relief, relief in the form of supplies or manpower to protect the general region, not, not our garrison. Our garrison was fine because it was, uh, we had some time to uh, uh, fortify it. But um, to protect the general region, we simply were not enough, as in our manpower was not enough. So the only assistance we, we received by the way, all the while requesting help from the world chat, um, our allies, uh, the uh, the people that were in the region and were, uh, uh, I mean, uh, able to help, of course. The only assistance we were given were, was in the form of two battle tanks manned by mixed members comprised of randoms, uh, a few members, of, one or two members of Cal. Uh, or CAW, I'm sorry about the name, and uh, FFL clans, as well as random, uh, as well as uh, more randoms that did not even know what was going on, and of course infantry uh, to su to support said tanks. Now we met by organizing that that uh, group together with uh, uh, basically three battle tanks, one light tank, one half track, and about a platoon of infantry. Uh, made of randoms, WNS members, uh, and other people, we managed to defend and secure the whole middle part of Farinac, that means Terra, House Colo, um, um, Whispering, uh, I, I forget the name, the southeastern bridge of, from Terra, Luxta, Mara, and uh, essentially we pretty much uh, defended the whole area. Uh, we were able to um, to, to push them back and actually secure at least our supply lines. But this took a significant toll of supplies, especially for the battle, plan, uh, battle tanks, supplies not able to be remunerated due to the aforementioned supply cutoff from Spade, as well as the, uh, the multiple enemies uh, both probing our defenses and also trying to, uh, well, use partisan tactics to uh, cut us off. Now, fast forward, we're now in, uh, after the, the, the events that I just uh, explained that where we uh, pushed back the enemy, we were able to get in, capture, uh, uh, secure, and uh, uh, move forward from Jade Cove. Um, and we, we, we entered the position to the south, or actually, we are at a position to the southeast of... Um, of Jade Cove, which is a natural choke point due to the mountains or the rock formations or to the uh, north and south. Uh, so that leaves, a, well, let's just say a Thermopylae's kind of narrow path, which did not allow us to continue easily. Due to that position, our battle tanks were not able to push in effectively and we were losing supplies, burning supplies, more than we were taking ground. That, that was not efficient at all. The, the the reason we wish to do uh, we we came to the decision to bomb Jade Cove was essentially because Jade Cove is a uh, of course it's a it's a great staging ground especially for the Warden Navy who has it as a uh, who has made it their home base but it is not strategically sound for the wardens uh, specifically. The area has, oh, uh, one second. Uh, the, 
the area has a... First of all, if you look at Apollo's landing from Jade Cove, you have an incredible height advantage, or the Collies have an incredible height advantage over Apollo's landing, being able to shoot and hinder any and all attempts to retake Jade Cove. Um, Jade Cove has... The southern part of Jade Cove is also uh, uh, favorable to Colonials because it has two beaches, which they will use uh, to, to ferry stuff in and out. They have a safe house to the south, which uh, combined with the upgrade of the um, um, the bomb shelter, which uh, um, doesn't, uh, which with, uh, can withstand uh, artillery shells, artillery shots, um, prevents it from um, from from having the southern part, the, the southern beach being um, um, uh, being being uh, uh, undefended. Also, they have the southeast, which is the uh, natural check, uh, uh, natural uh, point that I mentioned earlier, which further reinforces their uh, defensive capability. Should they lose, which they did, uh, Jade Cove. Um, so all in all, this in uh, in comparison to Macha, uh, um, Victor, and the other areas, it is extremely, uh, extremely uh, uh, um, appealing. To, for a rocket strike. Now, there comes the, the question of why did you not wait to fire at an intra region to, to fire an intra -re region launch? Because, as I said before, we were running out of supplies. There was no help from the Warden Navy in, in the form of their gunboats and other naval equipment. There was no equipment being transported or any aid uh, in manpower or assets uh, being brought to us. And we were basically, for all intents and purposes, dying. Even the stockpile that we've made at um, the launch site, which was our, uh, for the WNS, the main uh, FOB or forward operating base, um, our equipment that was at least. 8 to 15 to 12 trucks worth was gone. We were dying. We did not have equipment to fight with. Now, fearing a repeat of the previous Collie advance, which would honestly cripple us if they did something like before, the inability to defend without said aid or supplies for another 12 hours, which would be the amount of time needed to refuel the rocket, and as you understand, the risk of having the missile sabotaged, or worse, that is way worse, being captured by the Colonials and used against us, oh my god. A tough decision was made to, in a scorched earth maneuver, as in deny the enemy supply, uh, or supplies, or, or um, let's just say fertile ground, fertile ground for uh, staging, opera uh, staging operations from uh, that area, specifically J. Cove. Um, we uh, made that tough decision to blow up Jade Cove. Now, with that said, this is, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm guessing that a lot of people are not sure about how the, uh, uh, how a missile launch works. This is a very coordinated uh, um, uh, thing to do. The, the procedure is very precise. You cannot just fire the missile, and that's it. You have to very carefully create it. You have to wait for a... Uh, I, I cannot say that I remember the time uh, frames, but I think it's about what, 6 to... for a local launch, 12 to a... Uh, I, I'm not sure, but uh, in general, it needs quite a bit of time to actually get to... to, to get to... Uh, to get the missile to be able to to, to, to fire. After that, you also need quite a bit of preparation, not only to prep the missile for launch, but also to uh, um, transmit said coordinates, said um, uh, uh, coordinates for a send launch code. We had, by the time we announced that we're going to bomb Jade Cove, about thirty to thirty-five minutes to ensure, and we did, 
that no warden life or asset was lost. We literally were there. We were the ones that pushed into Jade Cove because it was changing hands uh, to, uh, from Collie to Warden all the time that specific day. We took down Jade Cove, we advanced to the natural choke point, and we saw that this is not sustainable. But we are not gonna bomb, no, hell no, we're not gonna bomb our own troops or our assets, our battle tanks, our precious battle tanks actually. Because they take a long time to build. What we did is we not only discussed with the group that we had together, if you remember from before, we had a platoon's worth of soldiers, that is 30 people, not WNS, people that we've gathered, together with three battle tanks, um, other equipment like trucks and logistical aspects, and we did not lose any of that. We talked with everybody, we decided that this is the decision, this is why we made said decision, which we also understand that this is a very, very tough decision to make, and of course nothing that uh, uh, the Warden team uh, without information would actually approve, understandably, this is a very tough uh, thing to chew. But this was a decision we took together with the team, understanding with them understanding even if they don't uh, agree for uh, some of them of course understanding and actually presenting all of our um um all of our arguments and then waiting for said 30 uh, minutes to evacuate all personnel and equipment using our own trucks and uh and manpower at the at this point, after after the the thirty minutes that we took everything out, Jade Cove was enemy held territory. This is something that I'm sad about, but our friendly uh, uh, team members were not fighting at at the at Apollo's landing uh, base. We're not fighting in the eastern side of Farina Coast. They were more interested. As we said before, and that's why Lectatech or uh, other people, uh, which I honestly care not name, um, were in the launch site, stopping or trying to stop our attempts in launching the missile, with grief by griefing um, the assets of both us, the WNS, but also, as you can understand, in an angry mob. Whoever was there. Well, that actually segues into the next question I had here, which was, what was your reaction to those uh, warden units who were attempting to attack that silo to stop the launch? So, because, for better or worse, there is no um, uh, uh, team damage to the uh, missile, there was no point in stopping them. There was absolutely no, stop, no point in stopping them from, uh, you know, trying to destroy the missile. It's... It, I do not agree about that, but you can do whatever you want at the end of the day. However, when it comes to people destroying team assets, or at least trying to grief said team assets, we tried our very best to actually get the assets out of there, or at least get the, remove the persons, uh, the peop uh, the persons in, uh, in question. Uh, whether it was by um, by uh, using the mod report, which should be the intended way, or because of the heat of the moment, uh, and I totally condemn this, ki team killing and trying to remove the the uh, the well the friendly enemies, let's just say, by force. And uh, that is because, um, again, sadly, there is nothing a mod report can do if you've already lost your asset, and we're when we're talking about just a few jeeps or trucks or uh, a few uh, bundles of VMATs. We're talking about battle tanks. We're talking about things that took hours, if not days, to make. Well, uh, of course, not specifically one battle tank, but you understand that the whole uh, stockpile there was or did take some, such time. So, um, 
So, uh, with with the uh, controversy that this has caused, uh, what was your uh, reaction and Ward North Star and the Hulls reaction to the backlash that you all faced uh, by this decision? As expected, as honestly expected, it was not a hard decision to accept. There is in no way a chance someone who has fought day and night to keep said area from the college to understand and accept such a loss. That there's, there's absolutely no way, and that is absolutely expected. Um, more so if they were not in the immediate area, as in haven't been through what we've been at that day, to understand the reasoning and the situation behind said decision. However, with all that said, which is understandable from both sides, our side, their side, if you want to uh, uh, put it that way, it is extremely sad to see the community bite its own flesh and waste those precious, those few precious moments we could use to strike back and take the area by spending time uh, uh, team killing, uh, griefing, uh, in general, wasting precious moments. Um, and, and again, again, it, it's not the WNS. We were, uh, at the time of, like, of, of impact and the aftermath, we were, well, it was pretty late for us because we were, um, we were uh, uh, at least a day uh, uh, playing. We were like three or four guys left, but we didn't, it was not only us who took, um, uh, who, who took fire, uh, like literal fire, team killing fire, griefing fire. It was any and all suspected members of the WNS of, uh, or sympathizers of the WNS, um, anyone who uh, provided an alternate point of view or a differing point of view than the actual, and, and this is, sa I, I hate the word that I'm going to say now, but the mob, the actual angry mob, like we are some kind of cannibals or uh, thugs or whatever you want to call it. However, again, as expected, this is not the first time this happened. This, of course, I feel this will be the largest incident in the Foxhole history by a long march. But understandable, it was the, like the first rocket we fired. Understandable. But it is extremely sad. It is extremely sad that we are much, uh, much more interested in jumping on a hate boat or a hate train or you wanna, whatever you want to call it, and start targeting people and again. Not only us. That's that. Like you can say that you you, know, you can bad mouth me or you know say that you know I don't care what you did. I don't like you. It's understandable. However, what does the asset that you can actually use alone? or the sympathizers, or even the simple bystanders, what do they have to do with your rage? Or, more importantly, what will you gain with said rage? Again, it was a tactically sound decision, but not one, unfortunately, and because of the situation, based on team morale. So... Uh, on to the, uh, next question, uh, how do you feel that this incident will affect WNS and its reputation? There is, um, there is something that is, um, I mean, totally understandable, um, the fact that we've taking a hit, let's just say, to your reputation. It's understandable. Um, it's understandable if people say that, oh, well, I don't like you because I didn't like your decision. Sure. This, um, in general, it's understandable to see or to hear uh, said, uh, um, um, you know, um, disagreements with our uh, um, decision. It's, it's, Totally understandable. However, we in the WNS, specific uh, and, and personally me, specifically me, I feel very sad about this. 
uh, no, 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 uh, necessarily sad about um, what they've done to me because there was no, nothing much done. To be fair, as in uh, this is uh, this is a game. This is a MMO game, sure, but this is still a game where you're supposed to have fun and enjoy your game, even if some things happen which you don't agree. It is still a game, a game you take to have fun in it. Um, essentially, I, I, I could just uh, summarize it as we're sad. We're sad because uh, of the, uh, the, the, what I said before, uh, the team, the community, the community biting its own flesh, it, it, its own frigging flesh. It, it is doing absolutely nothing right now, and I actually got uh, uh, information that we've actually lost Jade Cove. We have actually, I, I have uh, Foxhole pulled up here. We have lost uh, all, uh, all of Faranak, all of Deadlands, and we're uh, about half and half, or maybe a third of Endless we still have left. They have pushed mm -hmm. into uh, Callahan's. And that is understandable, again, because we spend so much hour, so, so many hours, so much time focusing on, on securing, uh, fortifying, at least keeping the area around the middle part of Faranak, uh, and I will specifically talk about that, um, to secure the area, to, to protect the area, to, to keep the area and continue to, uh, to operate from that area, from said area. And right now, and a few hours before, we have people absolutely wasting time talking in the various uh, uh, social media uh, um, uh, Discord channels and the like about one thing that, whether or not you, uh, they agreed, of course, happened. It happened. Passed. It did. Done. It's a done deal. It's something that they can essentially get over with and fight for, uh, and and, and uh, seek to to, um, uh, to to improve upon that, to learn something about that, and actually protect their interests now, which we need them now. We need uh, if we if we'd have taken matches, and that was our um, our, uh, our our reasoning as well. One of the reasons we. Uh, we bombed uh, Jade. If we take in matches Keening um, after Jade Cove, right? If we take in matches Keening, we would have had a good area on our side. Oh, on, sorry, on, on the colonial's side of the river that could, we could have used as our staging ground without any problems when it comes to uh, supplies and also uh, defen uh, defensibility. So. I mean, I, I, of course I cannot speak because I wasn't there, and that is another specific thing about the community. I was not there after I left, because it's pretty late for me, unfortunately. But I was there, um, and I, uh, I saw how Jade Cove went. Now, I'm not there when after in the aftermath of the, of the missile, but I, I, I don't know how it fell, how, why it fell. But if I could take an educated guess, with no battle tanks in the area, because of said griefing attempts, without any kind of, um, of communication between the people there, there, specifically there, and also without any kind of, um, of uh, uh, morale to fight with, and, or, more, more accurately, um, people focusing on talking in this very social media than actually playing, I, I don't think I have to say anything else. I mean, we literally lost the war due to um, due to a a um, a, a um, uh, how's that called? Uh, due to a difference in opinions. Well, um, uh, one one last thing is um, again when it comes to the missiles target. Great 
uh, great care was taken before we fired. There was absolutely no way we would fire in friendly uh, in a friendly town, and there was absolutely no way we would have done that if it meant our uh, excuse me our team losing the map. Um, I will briefly go into an off-topic scenario. What if we uh, uh, nuked Apollo's landing, bombed Apollo's landing? Then the Colonials will have a way to get in. That is the kind of mindset behind the actual, uh, the actual launch. And just so I can finish what you asked before, the WNS did not change. We are a Milsim clan. We're trying to win for the Wardens, for better or worse. There's no, there's no difference between Wardens or Collies. It's, it's a game. It's a fictional faction. Um, but we like the design, and we like to play as Colonials and win for the Colonial... Uh, the, but the Colonial, sorry, Warden faction. This is... Or rather, this has nothing to do with a singular event. This has absolutely nothing to do when it comes to, um, uh, um, uh, to, to our, the way we manage or the way we work or the way we play and have fun uh, to, what, to the decision uh, and the events that led to, uh, to that decision to, bombing, uh, to bomb Jade Cove. Go on. All right. Uh, so we talked about the effect that it had on WNS and that it had on the uh, World Conquest so far. But what thoughts do you have regarding the recent disbanding of WGA and some of the uh, officers there uh, deciding to switch to the colonial side due to the backlash faced? My apologies, Valley, but absolutely fucking sad. This was absolutely uncalled for. This is this is the point where I personally get mad. This is exactly the point where I get mad. Why the heck do you harass people for having a different opinion or doing something which you consider it is bad and you literally push them to the brink of madness, let's just say. The WGA came in in goodwill to help us. They had in no way, uh, they, they were in no way affiliated with our choice on launching the missile or on our, on our target on Jade Cove. They were there to secure a Warden missile site. My words exactly. My fucking words exactly. They were there to secure and protect a Warden missile site. And because of um, absolutely horrible um, relations with their... Uh, well, with the faction they, they split up from the Warden Navy, they got harassed and put down to the actual ground because, again, and I ask you, Valley, because of what? Of a game. Of a fucking game. I'm sorry about the, the French, my French, but, yeah, but it's, it's a fucking game. It's quite all right. Uh... Well, we've had reports of clans claiming that they would outright attack WNS members and affiliated groups on site. Have you had any reports of uh, conflicts with other warden forces attacking members of your clan and affiliated groups? Absolutely. On this one, I actually want to apologize to the dev team because of their, their or rather the moderator team, for their 24-hour work banning people left and right. Actually, if I, and, I'm, and I'm being mad, of course, I'm exaggerating. This is maybe the, the reason we lost the whole uh, 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 warden area, the, the, the middle regions. Guys, this is, and this is a direct call out, this is ridiculous. 
it does not matter whether you agree or not on a decision made by whoever did, whether it's called WNS, WGA, uh, random clan, whatever, or a single individual. Harassing people and s trying to silence them or uh, otherwise handle them or reprimand them or however you want to say this, it, it, it literally blows my mind. It transcends the, 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 the fact that this is indeed a fucking game. This is a game. This is not real life. I understand people, and, and me myself, me myself, I'm, I'm very immersed when I play a game. I like to. But this is a game. At the end of the day, bullying, reprimanding, handling, um, flaming, cursing, uh, uh, condemning, wh whatever you want to call, uh, um, uh, placing uh, all of this for a game, for a virtual lo rocket launch or a missile strike in a fucking game. Um, but again, this hasn't happened... Uh, 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 just now. This has been going on for a long ass time. There have been other situations, and specifically I'll say that there was a situation with the 82DK, a specific member in the 82DK, because not all of them are uh, of the same uh, mind, as, as is, every, as is uh, always with groups. They wanted to silence uh, co-leader Cerberus, because of his uh, opinions on whether to take light tanks or battle tanks. They posted bounties on my leader, and that is, by, by the way, that is completely unrelated to the missile that was a few days ago. But it, it, they, they tried to silence a, a player. I'm not going to say that he's a friend of mine or he's a, a clan uh, member or whatever. A player silence a player for his opinion in a game in in in, in a, oh my god in a fucking game um this again transcends the matter of of a, a role play or or you know uh, all the 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 wnsr traders or whatever it, it's there it transcends those boundaries it becomes harassing it becomes real life problems what the hell is the the the, the the best uh, uh, phrase I could use to describe this. Now, um, again, Valley and Press and whoever else is going to uh, hear this, I'm very sorry for this, but this is literally where I'm getting indeed mad because this is not a way to play a game. No, no, it doesn't matter if it's a team game or not. This is not a way to play a game. This is not healthy. This is essentially playing for. Uh, for your own, uh, I can't describe it anymore. Uh, any, anyhow, else uh, to uh, to to compensate for your own in real life inadequacies. So it, it's it's incredible. So uh, I I know I uh, I know you probably have a lot to say on the subject. I just have one final question here, uh, which is, uh, what would you like to say that to those who are calling for the end of Warden North Star? Do what you want. I'm absolutely fine with that. But please, work together. Whether or not you agree, don't fucking kill my, my tank when I'm trying to capture a location. We are here to play a game. Whether you agree with us or not, does not have any, does not give any frigging reason to destroy team assets and to grief players personal time um, in a game, and, and we're talking about a lot of time. If you if you want to make something in this game, it takes a significant amount of time and investment. Do not destroy, do not go personal for something that is, that, that, that transpired oh, in a frigging game. And I, honestly, happy holidays to all of you. But please, guys, this is not real life.
They, they, they were, they were, and, and we're not assholes. We, we actually bombed an area because it was the strategic, uh, um, uh, the, the, the most tactically sound solution. But whatever happens, do not take this out of the game. This has no reason to be here. Well, I, uh, I would love to thank uh, Yui Emperor for joining me for this interview. Uh, it was great having you on and hearing what you had to say. Uh, I would like to reiterate his point. I, Please, I do not want to see any more team killing going on over this issue. Uh, please handle everything with respect. I'm here to get every side of this story, and I'm documenting it for further... Uh, looks on what we've found out about this situation. Uh, with that being said, again, happy holidays to everybody. Hope you have a great new year. And uh, this is uh, Valley Sword with the Warden Press uh, signing out.